I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Leonard Dorlochter, co-founder of Peak. Leo, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. Hi, Ashton. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> You're very welcome. I know Peak has been working on some amazing things that are going to tie in blockchain to real world value and you know integrate the physical and the digital and let's just kick off our conversation with uh, from in your words a little bit about peak uh, what your team is working on and then we can dive into those details sounds great yeah yeah so peak is the web3 network for the economy of things and the economy of things is is really the the big goal we're working towards and the, it's kind of interchangeable with machine economy so you can really imagine an economy that's emerging at the moment where machines are able to trade between one another and with humans goods and services and that can be all kinds of goods and services and we're really building the network the infrastructure for this economy to emerge and it's important that it's decentralized and only there it can actually really function and be um at its best and happy to to dive into that a, a little bit deeper <laughs> definitely and thank you for that and yeah i don't think people realize uh just how important machines already are um uh, but once they you know have more integrate into uh the economy of things and and they're working with each other and they continue to get smarter um let's just hope it doesn't get to the point where they take over the world um maybe you can make sure peak is programming machines for good uh, and not for evil, um, but uh, it, it is definitely a lot of work still to go in this part of the industry. Maybe you can touch a little bit on before we get to the blockchain part. You know more about the economy of things and Web three and how the internet ties into uh, real world machines. Yes, absolutely. So um, maybe we take uh, one machine as an example, which is vehicles, or or yeah, really cars that are getting and becoming autonomous that are able to really function by themselves and, and drive around and offer goods and services like rides to people. Uh, they have to then also charge. So they have to, to pay other machines and other people as well mm -hmm. to basically sustain and, and be able to, to um, yeah, let, let's even call it to live because they, they will work basically for themselves and be active and um this this is something where it it really is important that the machine is um is able to transact with its environment um and and be able to interact with all kinds of stakeholders in an autonomous manner and um the, the problem right now is if you would do this in the web 2 and the centralized internet then you have certain machines that are um, existing on, on one platform that have their existence on, on, on this one platform. And, and there's a, this is a closed silo. And then those machines are not able to interact with machines that are existing on other platforms or users are registered with one platform and um, can't access machines that are, again, existing on another platform. So it's really... Um, closed systems all over the place a lot of silos and walled, walled gardens they exist mm -hmm. behind and they can't really they can't really be an economy emerging of machines on the current internet infrastructure mm -hmm. and that's where web3 and the blockchain comes in definitely great segue um, into yeah making transactions and making them efficient uh, and making sure that everyone's on the same channel and the same currency, you know, um, with the increased globalization, especially with machines that are working over the internet or remotely, you know, they're probably not transacting in some local town's currency. It's going to need to be all standardized yeah. and the communication channels need to be proper. And uh, in, in terms of the blockchain side of that, I know that Peak is working with the Polkadot technology to help achieve these goals. Maybe you can talk a little bit about why that technology is the best for Peak. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so the, the public Peak network we are um, about to release and will, will be launched this year is built on Substrate correctly, which is the framework the Polkadot ecosystem is built on top. And we decided to go um, 
pol with the Polkadot ecosystem because first of all, it's it enables the interoperability, really the, the the network of networks, and we see this as the future of Web three. There will be so many different networks that need to be able to interact with one another to have a decentralized internet. Then our substrate is a very sophisticated framework that really provides us with everything we need to build. And we also see the the future of Peak as becoming kind of a network of networks for the economy of things. So that mm. Peak could be a, a relay chain for the economy of things connecting to the Polkadot main relay chain. And then there are the different sub chains on the Peak network. So it is really scalable. And on top of all of that, uh, Polkadot is also an extremely healthy ecosystem uh, to launch, and um, there's not much maximalism going on, and um, it's it's very open and it's very well done. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and I, I know that you know Polkadot has so much promise, uh, but with Peak growing, also Polkadot ecosystem will continue to grow, and also just the economy of things and Web three will continue to grow. And it's very early right now. You know, we don't have uh, cars that can drive themselves. Never mind, pay yeah. us and pay them yet, uh, and all of the other kind of technologies. But hopefully, that gets down to the consumer level uh, in the coming years. As far as Peaks technology, how long has your team been working on this, and you know, where are you sort of at right now with it? Yeah, that's a great question. So we started um, with early projects already back in the end of 2017, where we uh, co-initiated Advanced Blockchain AG, which is a German publicly listed uh, software development firm. And Peak was growing under that umbrella as, as its own project. And back then we started focusing really on working together with machine manufacturers and OEMs in Germany, such as Audi, to, to really identify the use cases that create real business value and the problems that are worth to be solved. So we worked for quite some time creating uh, private networks, working with enterprises, mm -hmm. and are now in the process of really bringing all of that learning and value onto a public peak network because this is really how it can work. Um, it's, it's impossible to uh, disrupt current ecosystems if you try to build centralized um, platforms using blockchain technology, then you, you just change the underlying technology, but um, the, the entire governance and openness aspects um, um, are not coming with that. So yeah, we've been working on that for many years, really gaining a lot of experience in which are the use cases that make sense. For example, mm -hmm. uh, there's decentralized charging, there's a car sharing that can be done in a decentralized manner. Like you could imagine really offering your car in the future to, to anyone really, and then they can drive it, you can earn money with it. And of course, you need to tie in insurances and regulators, but mm -hmm. that's that's all possible. We will have really a, a future where the sharing economy becomes normal and we can res mm -hmm. use resources much better. And all of us will be able to earn from those smart machines like vehicles mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a very effective way and not just a few big platforms. That's amazing. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And the Open Blockchain Initiative, I actually was just saw I just saw that Peak is getting involved with the Mobi Mobile Open Blockchain Initiative. How is that going to help as well move move towards getting this, you know, realized into the real world? Yeah, Mobi is uh, doing a very important work since many years on bringing together key players from the automotive and mobility mm -hmm. space in general to develop standards. Um, that are then being used for, for example, vehicle identity standards, basically self-sovereign identities for vehicles and um, many other things. So they really bring together the, the different players, develop together with the different player standards, and then those standards can be implemented on blockchain networks so that also, for example, there's a vehicle that's running on the peak network um, and then there's a charging station that's running on another blockchain network and they can still talk and identify one another because the same standards have been used to implement this. And yeah, we, we joined Mobi to um, first of all, of course, leverage those standards and, and contribute to them, but also to kick off new projects and bring in all the knowledge and learning we've uh, gathered in the automotive industry, because otherwise there are again different silos in the mobility space that are working on 
similar or the same use cases. And it makes much more sense to collaborate, especially in Web3. It's all about creating composability and, and working together in an open and permissionless spirit. And yeah, that's why that's an important initiative for the mobility domain and blockchain. Definitely well said. And I completely understand uh, on terms of the machines and, and the robots speaking to each other and making sure everything is working on the same channel. And I'm curious about you know the end users. You know, let's say for example with the car um, and, and people yeah. that are going to be utilizing the Peak network. Did they also have to come in and you know use some kind of Peak currency or uh, Polkadot currency to interact with the machines? And like, how do the end users get involved with Peak? Yeah, that's a very very good question, and that's actually key to to adoption, really enabling this. Like end users. Um, should not even really know what's happening in the background. They shouldn't know it's, it's blockchain running there. They should just have a great user experience. And we're working exactly on that and on creating easy um, integrations for mo mobile mobility service providers, for example, in the charging ecosystem or existing apps that then can leverage the peak network and all uh, the logic that's running there as an alternative backend to a centralized backend, for example, mm -hmm. and still offer the users great user experience and own that user journey. And that's extremely important. And for example, yeah, if you if you do a transaction, uh, you need peak tokens to pay for those transaction fees, but there are ways to make it seamless for the user that a user doesn't have to top up their wallet with peak tokens first before they can do a transaction because if that's the case the maximalists may be uh, gonna do this but not not the majority and of course it needs to be user friendly for everyone that is able to use a mobile app definitely definitely i think that's the usability and the user experience are going to be key to you know end user adoption and lowering those barriers to entry to not have to run your own polka dot node or you know set up some technical thing just to try and interact with the network so i'm looking forward to seeing Absolutely. how that plays out as it continues to grow um in terms of the industry itself and you know the economy of things in the real world tying in this technology into that technology in the real world how far along do you see the other side of the table you know getting to a point where these cars are ready, the other robots are ready to use this technology and people can use it. Yeah, that's also a very good point. And definitely the adoption through manufacturers and the real world is something that takes a lot of time and, and, and work, especially working with a lot of big companies which have slow processes. But in, in Europe, for example, there's an initiative called GaiaX, which is uh, setting the European data infrastructure um, and it's funded by the EU with roughly 100 billion. And um, there is one consortium which we're working in that's led by Bosch, for example, where we're standardizing um, together with many more players identities for mobility and also data sharing in the mobility space. And um, that, that's really moving forward. So it has a lot of government backing. Many big corporations are involved and a lot of Web3 uh, projects are part of that as well. So we're we're really bringing in this new technology and um, big companies and governments cooperate on implementing it and creating a decentralized sovereign data infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the, in the next three years, we will do a lot there and we have uh, access to entire smart cities and, and test fields where we can implement those mm -hmm. use cases and really test them. And this is a great um, ground to, to, to adoption because it gets also a lot of public attention um, yeah, so we're moving, I'd say. I mean, of course, it takes time, uh, but a lot of good things are happening and a lot of capital is getting deployed also in terms of public funding. Definitely. Yeah, moving in the right direction. Um, glad to hear that you're paying attention to the industry. Obviously, that's very important. In terms of the next steps for the peak team, you know, in the shorter term, in the next six months and throughout 2022, yeah. What are the main things that your team is looking to get out and work on? Yeah, so we will be um, in the next six months. First, we will release very shortly core functionalities that we have had on the private networks. 
but open source them for the public network, which is our machine identity, um, access, role-based access control for machines, then also payment to enable seamless payment and, and applications like a normal user applications, we will be launching our um, public test net and then also our public mainnet will be running for Kusama parachain and uh, Polkadot mm -hmm. parachain. And um, yeah, really re release a lot we've been working on the, the past couple of months. So we have an exciting uh, six month ahead. <laughs> Very exciting. And for the viewers that want to follow along, learn more about Peaks technology and the economy of things, what's the best way for them to get involved into the communities? Yeah, so um, our Twitter channel, definitely then our, our uh, Telegram channel are two good places. Um, we will be opening a Discord channel very soon. And um, I think, and on LinkedIn, we are also active. So it, it's probably best to follow Twitter, LinkedIn and Telegram, and then the, the Discord channel and all major updates will be distributed there. And we're looking forward to working closely together with the community and also developers from the space um, yeah, to bring the economy of things forward. Amazing. Looking forward to that. And I will leave all those links for the viewers in the description box so they can get involved in the communities if they're interested as well. I really thank you for taking the time, Leonard, to come on and talk about Peak. This is really fascinating uh, technology that I'm excited to uh, use it in the real world, you know, as the technology in Web3 integrates. Uh, very exciting times ahead. All the best with Peak moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks a lot, Ashton, for having us again, and yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs>